go out there. So this is, oh, look at how beautiful that is. And that, so you, you say that's good urea? I believe. It's rattlesnake, rattlesnake plantain, but it's not a plantain at all. Right. So that's probably what, maybe why you're confused, but yeah. it's an orchid. Okay. <laughs> all right, and then when it flowers... Oh, I see. Yeah, so, so that's an orchid flower. So if you look at one flower there, you got yourself mm -hmm. the, the lower labellum. Mm-hmm. All that. Looks like a habanaria to me in a lot of ways. And there's what he was just looking at. The flower part does, at least. Yeah. So here, if you're doing a video, check it out. So focusing on that dead tree over there. Yeah. That's the eastern hemlock. Right. As is this the eastern hemlock. Right. So this is the dying days of the eastern hemlock because humans brought in the woolly adilgid, right? So we have major, major change happening in many places. So this is a key, pretty much a keystone species here. So the majority of the trees around, especially the water areas, major shade. So that's going to have much impact on the temperature of the water, which affects the dissolved oxygen in the water, which affects fish. And then it's going to be opening up this huge niche, and then we have these exotic plants that are going to be coming in. So there's a major transformation because we put in, brought in this woolly adilgid. And so you see the death of our suga trees, T-S-U-G-A, the eastern hemlocks, which we have two species. Canadensis is one of them. But both of them are being completely wiped out now. Yeah. Old growth trees. And, and how many interconnectedness, like I believe the lobster mushroom and obviously Ganoderma suga is specifically on the Ganoderma. You know, that Ganoderma is specifically on the suga tree, that's why its name is there. Mm -hmm. So we're losing that Rishi. So we're losing keystone components of our living earth and it kind of sucks. Pisca National Forest. And this, this is wiping out the whole Appalachian Mountains. Let's see if I can find a, some of that woolly adilgid on these. I'm not seeing it right now. But it's a little white, fluffy stuff. But it's almost, this has been going on for about at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. And supposedly started up in the upper Appalachian Mountains and spread all the way through, hitting the majority of them out. So here's another dead one right here. See that? Yep. So you Whoa. see all the shade that that would have been bringing on. Beautiful trail. These white flowers here again? That's the um, rhododendron. Maximum. Something like that. There's a couple of the big ones, but that'd be my guess. Rhododendron maximum. I could be wrong. Beautiful. That's the generic rhododendron that we have here in the mountains. Yeah. There's a catabensa, catabla or something like that, too. What are the big ones? Mm hmm. So if, if you're still videoing, then yep. I'll just show because most people don't know the difference between a carex and everything. So here you go. There's a carex. It has a hypogynium that's inflated around the akein. When you look at them, each one of these individual one, it's the only thing. It's triangular, so it's in the cyperaceae. These are quick videos and quick tutorials. Right. But there you go. You got a carex, and there's a seed inside of one of these individuals, otherwise known as a, an akein. Mm -hmm. If I break open that, and it's the only sedge that has a that surrounding this the, the seed and that's called the hypogynium so hypo being around you know this is an opportunity to just say to people sedges have edges why don't you say it and what did michael learn michael learned sedges have edges and rushes are 
Brushes are round. Round. And grasses have joints when the cops aren't around. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're wrong. Oh, no! Grasses like asses have holes. Okay. Grass. Both of them. <laughs> grasses like asses have holes. <laughs> Sedges have edges. Rushes have... They're round. Are round. <laughs> Sedges have edges. Rushes are round. Grasses have asses. <laughs> grasses like asses have holes. Or grasses like have joints when the cops aren't around. So that's it. it. Okay. Yeah. That's get it. The limericks down. I know. I well, little, I need my charango, you know, to sing songs. Well, that. we'll be doing that. But check out this. So, all right. Oh yeah. There we go. So this is a beautiful coral mushroom here. I, I mean, the coral mushrooms are just amazing to me. It's like swimming in a coral reef, and I think about seeing these. Oh my goodness. That's really I don't want to even pick that one, yeah, but isn't that mushroom. beautiful? Yeah. And how do they taste? There are a couple poisonous ones, or you know, ones that you have to know. And I have eaten them before, but I need my guidebook out to verify which kind it is. I, I would gather, I'd put that at my 95% probability, that one would be a good edible. All right, now, for the beginners, if you had your guidebook out, what are the stages of identification you'd go through on this? Well, come on now. That's such a... This is no regular mushroom, right? Right. It has no gills. Yep. So that puts it in its own group of the coral mushroom, you know, so that's the Ramarias. You know, you could start out by looking at, like, Rama means little branch. Okay. Well, this one isn't even branching, so it's maybe a different genus. Okay. Um, which I believe it is, because the Ramarias have little branches, branches. Right. but it's right next to it, it's in the same order, basically. Mm -hmm. And then you go through the guide, you know, I would go through the guidebook and then see that it is bright yellow, it has no little branches, and, you know, just that it's kind of flat, and uh, just go through there, and that's how I would do it, just, um, that's how I'd do it. And then I'd, I'd pull out mushrooms demystified, Bye. I'd pull out, uh, you know. Whatever. By Frank Stamets? No, uh, that'd be Paul Stamets that you're thinking of. Paul Stamets? Um, but there's there's uh, many other mushroom guidebooks, you know. That's yeah. just one of many. You know, just pull something like that out and then, so. Right. Cool mushroom. Coral mushroom. All right, likely, good. Likely edible. But I, you know, and there, I have a couple, I'm learning some rules of thumbs on these guys. So. Likely edible, but not raw. No, you shouldn't have any mushrooms raw. And the one that I took a little nibble you can of this eat morning. Raw mushrooms, but you're not going to digest them well. The one I took a little nibble of this morning. That was one that uh, Alan Muscat taught me. Called. I don't remember. He didn't teach me that well because I only met it once and I wrote it down in my notebook. Amanita. No, the not the amanita. Those were well, the. I did eat an amanita for my first time, you know, and that was the the blusher. Right. So that was my first uh, Amanita to ever try, but like I say, didn't even put that out there on the site. So what will we say about that? What do you say about it? I say it's the cottony. Is it the cottony? Okay, so he's guessing it's the edible cottony lactarius. <sighs> so now he's going to do a taste test. Because oh. that's what he said. The, the cottony one would be nice, sweet. It wouldn't have any crazy. Just take a little nibble of it. Well, go ahead and pull it out. Show him. The, the milk on there. All right, lactarius. All right, now Mike's get, guessing that the, that the taste of this would be mild. So go ahead and taste it. We're on video. <laughs> <laughs> There's his guess. He's calling it a cottony one. All right, well. And we're going to find out. You see the little piece I have here? I'm going to take maybe a sixteenth of it because I learned earlier today. Chew it good. Keep it in there. Mmm. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Is it the cotton wet the cotton uh, lactarius? No. Which it's one a is it? It's hard to talk right now because my lips are burning. <laughs> Tip of my tongue. Uh huh. This is how you learn. Yeah. This well, is what you won't be learning. This would not be the cotton lactarius. Uh huh. This Which I forget the name of too, but that one's edible. That looks very similar. Well, let's take a close look at this so we know what not to eat. So what's the what's the scientific name of this one? Remember, no. remember what I said it was the Pied Piper, all that. But the Piperaceae. Piperaceae. So Piperaceae is the pepper family. Right. So this, this is, is the one. So this is the one, Lactarius piperatus. Something to that effect. 
And I was just telling you folks about this, and, and just by, I don't know, lucky coincidence. Yeah. That he was wrong again, so. And I got to taste it again. <laughs> That's okay. making him learn his lesson the hard way. Wonderful. <laughs> Hyperaceous. There you go. Give me that camera. All right. I'm going to take a little break here while my mouth uh, recuperates. <laughs>